Good evening. So thankful for the songs that we have sung to our Father in Heaven for our prayer that we have focused to our Father in Heaven. And we have a Bible verse that we're going to read from 3 John. It's verse 4. And it might be the greatest verse that would define a father's desire for his children. Verse 4 says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Now, this is from John, the apostle, most likely toward the end of the first century. He is, he's aged. He is the last surviving apostle. And he considers Christianity, considers Christians as his children, and he is saying, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. He then goes and explains two individuals, one who is not walking in truth and one who is walking in truth. He discusses diatrophies. In verses 9 and 10, he says, I have written something to the church, but Diotrephes, who likes to put himself first, does not acknowledge our authority. So if I come, I will bring up what he is doing, talking wicked nonsense against us and not content with that. He refuses to welcome the brothers and also stops those who want to and, and puts them out of the church. John gives a warning. You know, he's, he's explained what he wants to see. He wants to see that his children are walking in truth. But then he goes and explains that, that this is not taking place. In this warning, we find it in verse 11. He says, Beloved, and again, he's writing to the churches. Beloved, do not imitate evil, but imitate good. Whoever does good is from God. Whoever does evil has not seen God. So he mentions this man, Diotrephes. Then he mentions Demetrius. And I, I think about one is good, one is evil. One, if you think about it, their names are like, like twins. One's the evil twin. If you look at it, we don't know much about them other than these writings. We don't know anything about Demetrius except for one verse, verse 12. Now, there's another Demetrius that's mentioned in the book of Acts, and it's the silversmith, and there is nothing to link the two. But what's interesting, and I do not believe it's the same person, but notice it says, Demetrius has received a good testimony from everyone and from the truth itself. We also add our testimony, and you know that our testimony is true. Most likely, Demetrius is the one who has this letter and is bringing it to the churches and it would be Diotrephes who would be trying to bar him at the door. Trying to stop him from bringing this letter. But John is giving three very powerful testimonies to say who this man is. And I want us to take a moment and see that these testimonies are a witness. The word here is, is, is the witness that confirms his goodness. And it comes in the first place from everyone. Did you notice that? It says, Demetrius has received a good testimony from everyone. Can you imagine if that was said about you? The idea is he's well spoken of by everyone. And what's interesting, the word there is in the perfect tense, and it means that he was well spoken of by everyone. He is well spoken of by everyone, and he will be well spoken of by everyone. Because that's what his character is. Has shown. He has a tried and true good character. 1 Peter 3 15 through 16 says, But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ, the Demetrius, or, or the, the, the Diotrephes, Toward Demetrius, when when uh, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame, it it applies so very well to Demetrius. So the witness that confirms his good goodness comes from everyone, but it also comes from the truth itself. 
I think that's interesting. The truth itself bears witness that Demetrius is, has a good character. Uh, people could see that he was living the truth. And that reminded me of 1, P, uh, 1 Timothy 4 and verse 12. Let no one despise you, Paul says to Timothy, for your youth. But set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. So the idea is that truth is something that we live. It's not just what we say. It is our conduct. It is our love, our faith, our purity. So the witness is that confirms that he is good comes from everyone, comes from the truth itself. But it also comes from the Apostle John. Because notice he says, we also add our testimony, and you know that our testimony is true. And remember, all John wanted in the world was verse 4. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. John saw that in Demetrius. Would he find you walking in the truth? There is no greater joy than walking in the truth. So I wanted this lesson to be more focused on be Demetrius. Uh, be Demetrius. Walk in the truth. T tonight, there will be no greater joy for you if you're walking in the truth. We have an invitation that we're going to offer. And maybe as we're, we're meeting this midweek, there's some things that have transpired since Sunday that, that you need to make sure that your, your focus is walking in truth, that your focus is striving to serve God. If we can encourage you, if we can help you in the walking in truth, there's no greater joy. If you want to access that joy, walking in the light as he is in the light, we'll have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If you've not accessed that blood through repentance and being baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins, then you're not walking in that light. You don't have that joy yet, but you can access it tonight. If you have a need, please respond now while together we stand and as we sing. Night is called, we need to be